let's be honest, we don't know anything about our elected officials. They're hidden behind curated social media profiles and press releases to the point that they often seem barely human. We're here to break down those barriers and get under the hood of their real character. Our guest today is Assemblywoman Linda Carter. My name is Scott Salmon, and this is Politically Driven. What's been your favorite job that you've had? As, like, my entire career? Entire career. Everything you've ever done. Everything. Let's sum up your life in one moment. Okay. Actually, <laughs> my favorite job was being a lifeguard. Really? Yeah. I was a lifeguard when I was younger, going through college okay. in the summertime. I was a lifeguard. In, in Plainfield? In or? Plainfield. Really? I lifeguarded at Seidler's Field and down at Rushmore um, Avenue Field. Yes. But I think it was really just... Uh, our kids even today are not exposed to some of those things. It's mm -hmm. the summer, it's the water, it's the it, mm -hmm. and it's empowering. But truthfully, it's really like empowering our youth and empowering being able to really help those. Those are the best jobs that I've had. <laughs> McDonald's was my very first job. Was it really? This, this McDonald's? This McDonald's. Right what, here. What, what was the job? Um, when we graduated eighth grade, okay. Mr. Henderson owned the building, um, owned the McDonald's, and I think he was probably the first African American. Really? Um, might be, I think, in the state of New Jersey, but he and his kids, I went to school with them. We were in grammar school with them. Huh. And we graduated. He gave like four of us jobs. Really? And so, yeah. what, was your, what was your job? Oh, I worked the counter, I worked the drive through I worked the grill area, We, I liked the whole thing. The whole thing? And how long did you work there for? Um, two years. Okay. Yeah. And when I got about, because I worked there when I turned 14, getting out of eighth grade, and mm -hmm. then when I got 16 and a half, I worked at Sears. Ah. You, you come from one block, you come from another block, you were all at the pool. Yeah. You got to know each other, you got to play in the water with each other, and you got to have fun. Mm. Pretty cool. Well, well, that was during when you were in college? Yes. Now, how did you get how did you get that job? Through the city. Okay. Through the city of Plainfield. Oh, that's pretty cool. And they would need the lifeguards, just like we all need lifeguards today. Yeah. I think, yeah. Every, I think every youth should, you know, make yeah. sure they know how to swim, yeah, and also get your lifeguarding license. Mm. You know, how lifeguarding doesn't mean you have to be at the beach. Right. Being at the pool is yeah. just as much fun. And closer to home. And at closer least up to here, home. At least up here. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely was. Plainfield truly is unique, but Plainfield is truly a caring town mm -hmm. and a very diverse town. We're, you have a lot of different cultures, mm -hmm. and we embrace them all. So when you look at Plainfield, you know, I grew up here, I, you know, I used to live on the West End, and then we moved down here to the East End of town, and it used to, you know, you have East End and West End. You don't see that anymore, which is great. Mm -hmm. You see, here's the city of Plainfield. And you have so many people that will help each other. We have a lot of churches. We have a lot of family. And you do have the diversity, which really lends. That's one of the biggest jewels. And all of the beautiful homes that we have here in the city of Plainfield. Rillo's Real, um, mm -hmm. stand used to be here. Yeah. And it, I was Mr. Schultz, who okay. had the um, ice cream stand that was there. Uh. That And it would be busy all the time. Mr. Grillo had the best, best, best ice. <laughs> the best ice. Oh, yes. <laughs> The best. My nephew would come up from Virginia, and he'd come and he'd stay with me for the summer, mm -hmm. and he'd say, "Come back." And he, he was country. He was a little country boy, <laughs> and he said, "Aunt Linda, Mr. Griller told me he's gonna make sure I have the recipe." I said, "You really think that, huh?" I said, <laughs> you really think when, when you turn how old? <laughs> uh, have you lived your entire life in Plainfield? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, what did your parents do? My father drove a truck, mm -hmm. and my mother worked um, for IBM and for um, banking industry and all. Okay. Um, and were they, were they political family at all? No. No? Not at no. all? My mother would look at me and say, you are absolutely crazy and out of your mind. What do you think you're going to be doing? Really? When yeah. you when you uh, when you guys start getting involved in later yes. on? Yes. All right. So you, don't, you never had any political discussions at the, at the dinner table? No. So what was your first political memory then? Um, my political memory really is I was very involved in school mm -hmm. um, when I went to college, um, getting involved with student government, okay. and really reaching out. Those were really for my first kind of political okay. ties. When I got back into Plainfield, I wasn't that much, but I did a lot of volunteer work and really did stuff around in the community. And then when I saw the need um, and was approached, I accepted. When, when I was younger, yeah. well, when I, 
some of the politics, and yeah. I think probably I am where I am today, yeah. is I vividly remember the riots oh, okay. in Plainfield. Right. Okay, and that's aging myself too. I vi and I was young, mm -hmm. and I remember those riots um, and really things happening in town and how the change changed over the next couple of years but I also remember you know what many when Mitchell and everybody Mr. Lattimore they all really worked really hard to bring the resources that we really needed here in the mm -hmm. city of Plainfield mm -hmm. and really watching many of them. Now when you were kids since your family was not particularly political mm -hmm. what did you think you wanted to do as a kid? Oh when I was a kid I was gonna be an attorney. Yeah? Oh yeah I was going to law school. Oh what happened? It, it changed my mind. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, as someone who's I gone to law school, it's, you know, it's cracked up to be. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, as I got closer, yeah. I really st saw that I was more fit for business. Mm -hmm. So when I went to school... When you were in uh, high school, was, college, or...? Towards the end of high school okay. and the beginning, because when I first went to college, I was going to school for sociology. Okay. Um, with saying, you know what, when I'm finished and get that degree, then I would probably go to law school. Mm -hmm. I changed my first semester in school. Really? Oh yeah, I switched over to the business department huh. and I got my business degree. And business definitely seeing, I have family members who have businesses that I got a little bit more involved in and watching that and grow. Um, so it really got me more into the business field where really my talents have lent to be much better. Did high you? school, I didn't go to the Plainfield school system. Okay. I went to a Catholic high school, mm -hmm. which was great. Um, and actually, later on, um, Dr. Gadapaku, mm -hmm. who was one of the science um, teachers there, and knowing her, and actually, years later, I am one of her sorority sisters. That's cool. Yeah. Well, what sorority is that? Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Oh, yeah. I like that. You, you got it. You, that was instantaneous. Yeah. That one, you know, yes. <laughs> That's the... I have been a part of Big Brothers Big Sisters, um, and also through my sorority, we have done many mentoring programs we did, um, helping young leaders achieve greatness, which we called HILAD, and helping young ladies, um, and really developing and trying to work and giving them what all their possibilities are. What's the best advice you've ever gotten in anything? Be true to yourself. When did, when, uh, when did someone give you advice? Um, really, as I was growing up, mm -hmm. you know, have so many you have so many different things going on around to you you have to be true to yourself because when you're true to yourself you'll get the inklings you'll get the feelings like if it's a gut feeling be true to your, your gut feeling mm -hmm. if it doesn't feel right okay don't let the other people influence you mm -hmm. and that's things that really have been given to me as I have been growing up and I always try to I have to be true to me mm -hmm. um, because I believe my values, you know, my principles that have been instilled in me as I grew up and the influences my family have really helped me lend to be to be able to be out there and, and do the right thing. Uh, do you remember who told who gave, first gave you that advice? Uh, my mother. Oh, okay. Oh uh, yeah, my mother was, she was a good woman. She was like, okay, be true to yourself, let's, you know, make sure. And you know what, you can look at, see what all your possibilities are. What's your favorite memory of your mother? favorite memory uh, really when we'd have all of us all the family she made sure that all the family would be together during holiday time and making her sakatumi cake sakatumi cake yes what kind of cake is that it's just a regular bun cake with a strudel in the middle Ooh. and it's a sakatumi cake. Your, you have a favorite memory of your brothers when you were growing up besides them torturing me as i grew up <laughs> You know, growing up in Plainfield, and Plainfield's not that big, mm -hmm. and as you grow up, sometimes people, I would say, I would ask them, um, or people would meet me, and i tell them who my brother is, I never knew they had a sister. Yes, <laughs> a younger sister. How could you not know? Because my See, brother will always say, oh, you're my favorite sister. You're my yeah. favorite sister. I'm your only sister. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about being in the, in the assembly? One of the things, okay, now that I'm in the assembly, and I've only been there, what, a couple of months. Mm -hmm. I'm really getting acclimated with, you know, the district, right. District 22, and really trying to um, get a hand in, and a feel around some of the things that really we need to set policies in place for. So, but the thing I are meeting individuals, um, getting to know individuals, and.
creating those partnerships because I think partnerships are important. I always try to remember, listen, was it always easy? No. Um, and I have to be able to give back. And I've always believed, Shirley Chisholm said, you know, services and rent that we pay to be here on earth. And, and I really believe that. You have to be able to give back to your community. And that's why I like the position that I'm in now. And I've been able to grow um, and move up um, in this political process. Did I ever think that when I was younger, okay, that I'm going to be a politician? Absolutely not. You have some people that, you know, this is their drive. Right. This is what they want to do. Um, that wasn't me, but I'm glad I'm here, and I know that I can make a difference here, um, and in District 22, or even just overall, there's things that you need to get done, and I've always believed, if I'm going to, if I want to make a change, I can't just talk about it, right. I just step in and do it, what keeps me grounded, what keeps me, um, is my faith, mm -hmm. you know, my family, my friends, and I have friends who are really have become my family. I consider them my family. I came in also at a point where we're at the end of the budget process. Mm -hmm. That was pretty, that to me was, okay, here you are in the fire. <laughs> Trying to really kind of get all of the information because mm -hmm. here I am voting on things. Right, right. Trying to, you know, read up on what I need to read up on. But you know what? It got handled in asking some of the questions. And not knowing, am I asking the right questions? You know, it, it was a lot, right. but it was great. Right. Everybody has been so gracious in, in, on both sides, mm -hmm. you know, and I believe that I can go and ask any questions to any one of them um, and really get the information. So they've all been really great, really, really great individuals. So, so how do you have time to do anything? One day at a time. I, tru I truly, I haven't slept in like two years. And <laughs> See? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank for doing you. This. I hope everything this, went this, well. This is great. Okay, this is great. Just, now, if it doesn't look, we can go for another ride. Okay. Okay. okay deal. Okay.